Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib and it's time once again for your weekly wrap up. And this week I thought we would talk about Windows 11. I've had a lot of people asking me about it, so I thought I would offer my two cents on the whole thing. I installed it on the HP Dragonfly that we reviewed the other day. So we'll take a really quick look at it running on the laptop here and then dive into some of the things that I'm concerned about related to its hardware requirements. Let's get to it. So before we jump into the topic, I've got Windows 11 here running on this laptop that we reviewed the other day. This is the Insider build. And I like the fact that they've simplified a lot of the interface. It's been cleaned up a bit. It's been very stable, actually. It feels a lot like kind of an incremental upgrade to Windows 10 like you would normally get. And I think that's how they're going to push this out uh, once it gets introduced. Uh, what'll happen here is that as you load up applications, it'll slide everything over to the left if you have the taskbar centrally oriented, but you can move it back to the left-hand side of the screen if you want. So if you right-click on the taskbar, go over to behaviors, and then move it to the left, it will move everything there. I don't miss the smart tiles. That was something I never used before. So I like being able to put my commonly used apps here on the uh, start menu and then of course going into here to find additional ones. And I often do a lot of searching for apps and I can still do that here as well. A lot of the interface just looks polished up. It doesn't look all that different. Um, so for the most part, you know, it's gonna be a nice upgrade and I don't think it will be all that jarring of an upgrade to people if they decide to auto install it when it's available. But there's really nothing here on the surface that makes me say, wow, I can't wait for this to come out. It's nice, but it's not groundbreaking. And I think that's probably done on purpose because Microsoft has had a really hard time when they do these groundbreaking upgrades to Windows. They're not often very well received. But the big story here with Windows 11 is under the hood. And I think Microsoft is starting to make some changes to try to make the Windows platform more secure. And because there are so many Windows users in the world, Microsoft can't just snap their fingers and make it happen. It's a very big ship that takes a long time to steer. So they're making steps now to build in security features that are not built into prior generations of Windows. And those features are going to require more current computers uh, that have a TPM 2.0 chipset installed. Many recent computers have that built in, like the one we've got here on the desk but many others that are not all that old do not. Now, in addition to the TPM requirements, Microsoft is also upping the minimum processor required to run Windows 11. Uh, you can check out the list of supported processors at the link that you see on screen here. And if we take a look at some of the low end of the market here, the mini PCs that we like to look at here on the channel, the minimum now is a Gemini Lake processor. That's the most recent low-end Intel processor for those mini PC type computers. Anything earlier than Gemini Lake right now is not compatible and won't install Windows 11. And I can tell you, I've got them here in the house. There are some fully functional Apollo Lake Intel machines and some that I have that are older than that that run Windows 10 just fine, but they're going to be locked out of Windows 11 at the moment. On the more consumer side of things, looking at the core line of processors, if you're not on an eighth generation core chip or better, you will not be installing Windows 11. And the same time frame here applies to the AMD Ryzen line of chips as well. So pretty much everything uh, two years and up is probably okay, but anything older than that at the moment at any rate is going to be shut out. And that's unfortunate because there are a lot of computers out there that are perfectly functional and high performing running with fourth, fifth and sixth generation Intel chips that will not be able to run Windows 11 as currently configured. And there was some confusion over this and there's been some discussion on Twitter as you can see here. And uh, Steve Dispenza here is from Microsoft and he responds to a request from someone on Twitter about this processor question. And he says that the uh, specific CPU requirements that they have now make these minimums the minimum, and it may not be easily circumvented, although I'm sure people will figure out a way to do that. Now, Microsoft did release a compatibility tool to see if your computer would work with Windows 11, but they have since pulled it down because people were very confused by it, and I think it was beginning to generate some negative press for Microsoft. So they're going to be revising this and releasing something different in the near future. And the reason why people were confused is that initially, 
All it would tell you was whether or not you were compatible, and if you weren't, it didn't give you a reason why. So then they updated it to give you the reason as to why it might be incompatible. However, many computers might be incompatible as far as the tool is concerned, but they actually had the hardware that would support Windows 11, and that hardware might have been switched off in the BIOS. That's what happened to me on my motherboard because I ran the tool. It said I didn't have a TPM chip, and I said, that's kind of weird. This is a brand new computer that I built not too long ago. And I went out on Reddit, and sure enough, there's a BIOS setting that by default is off, and if I switch it on, now I've got TPM 2.0 and I'm good to go. And as noted here, uh, the ASUS motherboard BIOS calls the TPM support something different than what you would be looking for. And I think that's the kind of thing that is going to be driving a lot of people crazy when Windows 11 rolls out and they're trying to get it to work on their computer. Now, Microsoft, along with pulling down this tool to prevent confusion, released a blog post here to kind of defend some of their decisions around these steep hardware requirements. And they're saying, first and foremost, it's about security. They want to get everybody on Windows up to a certain level. And although they can't, again, snap their fingers overnight and change everything, I think they're really trying to push people into getting hardware that supports some of these new security features that might make the OS more secure. Now, they're saying here that if all of these different features that they're requiring are implemented, it will reduce malware by 60%. But that's in the current scenario because a lot of this malware is written for Windows 10 without these features. As we know in this business, when things get updated, uh, people change their tactics and of course uh, are able to still take advantage of a weak system. So I don't know if the 60% number will hold over time, but I do understand where Microsoft is going with this. But unfortunately, it's going to leave a lot of people locked out. And I think the world may not be in a good place because of it. We'll touch on that in a minute. They also talk here about reliability and compatibility. And I think that's kind of a given because they're really reducing the number of computers that can run Windows 11 to a rather small number. Uh, so that of course will make things more reliable and compatible because there will be less computers that they have to account for when they are rolling out new drivers or new versions of the OS. They did, however, indicate some willingness to move the line back a little bit on the minimum hardware requirements. So what they said in this blog post is that as they continue to play around with the insider build of Windows, they might look at allowing this version to run on 7th generation Intel machines and AMD Zen 1 based computers that quote unquote meet our principles. Uh, so that's moving it back a little bit, but it's still locking out a lot of people with very good and useful hardware. Uh, notebookcheck.net has a list of Microsoft devices that at the moment, any rate, uh, may not be compatible with Windows 11. Although if they do move the marker down into the seventh generation of Intel chips, you might see a few of these computers drop off the list. But that's a pretty big list of some nice computers from Microsoft that I'm sure people are still using today. And my concern here is the fact that uh, Windows 10 support is slated to end in 2025. Now that's a couple of years off still, but still I think a lot of the computers that are running Windows 10 today will probably still be functional and usable uh, well into that year, especially if people don't see a need to upgrade their PC uh, to something newer. And if we look at what the current share of Windows computers are out there, uh, you can see here that right now, at any rate, 78% of the Windows computers that StatCounter encounters are running Windows 10. But check out the fact that Windows XP is still occupying about a half of percentage point out there. And that just shows you that when people have something that works, many times they don't see any need to change it. And I think that's going to create some issues in the world here, maybe not for Microsoft, but for the security of the economy and nations around the world. Uh, here's an example of something that happened back in May of 2019 with Windows XP, where Microsoft was forced to patch a no longer supported operating system because it had a huge gaping vulnerability that was putting the world at risk because these XP machines would be taken over and turned into bots that were sending out more of these worms to other computers around the world that were vulnerable. And that's my big concern here. Who's responsible for this hardware and this software in this case? 
after it's no longer supported, but huge vulnerabilities are discovered. And this is not just Microsoft. Google has that problem with Android because we all know how many Android devices out there uh, are never updated and just kind of sit out there plugged into the network and are vulnerable to attack. Uh, most recently, we had an issue with these WD MyBook Lives. You got to check out this story. This is a product that wasn't updated since 2015. It's been discontinued. WD has no economic incentive to continue supporting the product, but it was still completely functional for the people that used it. And apparently there was a vulnerability in there that turned a lot of these WD MyBook Lives into a botnet node. And then somebody who was at war with the people that were running this botnet went in and started wiping them out, taking out the botnet and all the data on it. Uh, and that was a device that was no longer supported, but now suddenly uh, creates an implication for, again, national and economic security. And that's my concern here with Windows 11, because when Microsoft makes Windows 11 the current version of Windows, it's going to abandon tens of millions of PCs running Windows 10, if not more than that, that will no longer get security updates. That's going to be a major vector of attack. Sure, we could see corporate America doing those kinds of upgrades, but everyday consumers, especially in parts of the world where a computer is a significant portion of their income, are going to be using PCs that are vulnerable. And I think that results in a significant security risk. In the past, we could move those older PCs to Windows 10 from even Windows XP, for example. That's not the case here because Microsoft is drawing a very uh, strict line in the sand here with hardware requirements. And that is really I think something that needs to be discussed. What do we do about all those computers that will be abandoned from Windows 11 with no path to being made more secure? Yes, I guess you could run around and install Linux on them, but how many people are going to do that? We certainly didn't see people drop Windows XP for Linux. And so we've got to come up with some kind of plan here uh, for all the PCs that Microsoft is going to be dropping when Windows 11 becomes the core OS. Now, my prediction about this whole hardware abandonment issue is that governments around the world are going to put some pressure on Microsoft to figure out some way to continue supporting Windows 10 into the future. And I think what will happen there is Microsoft will say, we'll be happy to pay us. And I think that's what's being set up here. Let me know if I'm crazy down in the comments section. Now, this week's wrap up is being brought to you as always by all of you. I want to thank some super chatters who contributed during one of my live streams last week, My Tech Guy Tim and Wolf Factor 56. We also got some new supporters here on the channel. On Patreon, the Owl Always Winks on ET, that's their name, uh, contributed on Patreon, and Low5 contributed on Floatplane. And if you want to support the channel, we've got a lot of options for you to do that. We, of course, support Floatplane, as you just saw. We support the YouTube membership program with that join button down below. And of course, we've got my donor box page uh, at lon.tv slash support where you can make a monthly or a one-time contribution. We have other channels you can find me on here, including my extras channel where I upload mini reviews and supplemental content. We uploaded a bunch of stuff last week uh, that I had here on the desk that were just not up to par for the main channel, but certainly worked well there. And then of course, you can find me on Amazon at lon.tv slash Amazon shop. And you probably noticed I've got a new uh, little trophy back there. Uh, that came from the Amazon live team. I'm one of their inaugural live streamers on Amazon. That's where I stream to uh, when I'm sitting here at the desk. It goes up on YouTube also. And if you want to follow me, you can go again to that Amazon link and uh, follow me there. But I want to thank the folks at Amazon for sending over a nice little decoration for my uh, shelf back there. Pretty nice stuff. And thank you to them once again. Now, if you want to engage with the channel, you can. You can go to lon.tv slash email for my very infrequent email list. We only send out something when we've got some kind of event going on. We've got the Facebook group and we've got the store where I sell reviewed items. And there's only one of them because it's just the item that I reviewed here on the channel. And you often get a good deal on those reviewed items because they're now used but are still pretty new. And if you want to get updated every time we update the store, you can go to lon.tv slash store alert to get notified whenever I add something or reduce prices. That is going to do it for this week's weekly wrap up. Thank you all for your continued support of the channel. I greatly appreciate all of the feedback and everything else that uh, you do to help me make this channel better. And I'll be back with more reviews later in the week. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. 
This channel is brought to you by the Lawn.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Jim Callagher, Hot Sauce and Video Games, and Brian Parker. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lawntv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lawntv slash s.